Whether we like it or not, Ubuntu is one of the most popular Linux distributions out there. And I think that that's actually for a very good reason. It's one of the most talked about Linux distributions. And when people are switching from Windows to Linux, usually they go with the most popular things. So Ubuntu has that momentum of being the most popular for well over a decade. So people tend to use it. Of all the Ubuntu releases, the LTS is usually the most popular because it's the one that is touted as the most stable, it's the one that is supported the longest, and it means that you don't have to worry about always upgrading to the newest version every six months. The latest Ubuntu LTS release is 22.04 and they'll be released tomorrow. Now, what I thought I would do today is talk about the top five features that I like the most out of this latest LTS. Now, it won't be all that surprising for anyone who's watched the channel for any amount of time. Most of the features that I like happen to be things that deal with cosmetics. Now, there are a couple that aren't dealing with the look and feel, but for the most part, the things that I enjoy the most are the ones that are actually giving you some customization options. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. So this is Ubuntu 22.04. Now I'm not sure if this is the default wallpaper for 22.04 or not. I'm still using the beta because I'm recording this video bef the day before the actual release. But if this is the actual wallpaper, I have to say that this is the best wallpaper they've had probably in the entirety of Ubuntu. Now the colors are still a little off for me. I'm not a big fan fan of the purple, but that's an Ubuntu thing, so you kind of got to get used to it. But the actual design of the wallpaper is really nice. That's not one of the five things that I was going to talk about, but I just had to point that out, that that wallpaper is really nice. Like I said, I'm not sure if that's the default one or if that's just the one that they're using for the beta. Uh, but anyways, the first thing that I really like about Ubuntu 22.04 is the ability to do more customization when it comes to the panel. So if we open up the settings application and we look here, and we scroll down in the appearance tab, we'll see that there's an entire section for the dock. Now there are a few things here that were there before. So you could always auto hide the dock. You could always change the icon size. You could always choose which monitor the dock was on and you could always choose the position on, on the screen. Now, not always, but at least recently you could do all those things. What's new here is that you can now make it so that it's not a panel anymore. So it's actually going to become more of a dock. So this is actually a feature of Dash to Dock that they is a, it's a GNOME extension that they've used for a while to make it not the GNOME thing that comes with vanilla GNOME. But now it's built into the settings panel. So if you want something that is more GNOME-like, you get a dock there along the side. Now for me personally, what I would do is this, is move it right to the bottom and then this shows up down here and it looks really nice. I prefer this look over the traditional Ubuntu look, but you know, everyone likes their own thing. So another thing that they've added now, and they've done this for a good reason, is that if you click on configure dock behavior, you can actually disable the dock from showing volumes and devices automatically. So if you were to connect a USB drive or an external hard drive or whatever, that would actually show up in the dock by default. You can turn that functionality off. You can also turn off the, the trash so that the trash icon isn't there. I would like it if there was an option to move it from the dock to like the desktop, that'd be great. You could also just create a shortcut, but it would be kind of cool if it was automated. But anyways, that's the dock customization. I like the fact that you can now make it into this dock thing instead of the panel that uh, is traditional. I like this way better. The next thing is actually still on the same page, and you might be noticing it. This whole range of colors here, what do those things mean? Because those were definitely not there. If we go take a look at Ubuntu 21.10, which I actually have here in a VM running right alongside, and uh, we can actually see, go away, that a lot of this stuff is different. So we had the dark and light mode before in the last interim release, but the stuff that I showed you about the dock, some of that stuff wasn't there. Also, those colors, not there. So if I just go ahead and close this and go back to the new one, here's what's different. So these colors are highlight colors or accent colors, as I guess is what they call them. So if we actually open up Nautilus here, and by default, this is what it looks like. So you're using the default Ubuntu orange for the accent color. If we change it to, let's just say this, like, bluish green thing, you can see how the icons actually change color. And that's really cool. So you can also do purple. So that would change the, it to a purple 
accent color and you can also notice that the highlight color in the menus also changes so it doesn't do so well in Nautilus but in the settings panel which uses a different toolkit for theming and stuff that color actually flows into the settings app and several of the other more advanced GNOME applications. Uh, another thing that you'll notice that if you're coming from 20.04 Ubuntu actually now has a full-on dark mode so this is what the dark mode looks like and I have to say that the the dark mode and purple they need to make this the default this looks absolutely amazing if Ubuntu looked like this with the panel along the bottom and this color scheme it'd be my new favorite I don't know if I not if I'd use it or not because there's other things that piss me off about Ubuntu but in terms of look and feel this is gorgeous uh, another thing you'll notice about this is that if you choose the white theme you get an actual white theme for all of the GNOME things up here, the settings pan, the drop down panels along the top. If you go to dark mode, then you get also dark modes. So one thing I did notice is that the dark modes aren't exactly the same. So this is a lot darker than the windows, but it matches the, the panel up here. So I guess that makes sense. One thing about the dark mode that is actually really cool is that if you change the wallpaper while you're in dark mode, so let's just change it to this. And then we go back here to the appearance and change to light mode. You'll see that the wallpaper actually changes back. So if you watched my GNOME 42 video, one of the things that you all have seen, and the same thing in uh, the Fedora video, is that they have these wallpaper pairs so that there's a wallpaper for the light mode and there's a wallpaper for the dark mode. But you couldn't actually create those pairs. In Ubuntu, you can. Now, it's not anything like it's a thing like it's not they, they didn't create a tool to do this it's just that if you change the wallpaper in light mode to say this thing here and then you change to dark mode you can see that it's still using the same wallpaper so if we change back to light mode it uses the one we just set so you can create those light dark pairs with the light theme and your particular wallpaper and then you can create a pair for the dark mode and it just look is kind of cool. It's not something that I've ever actually seen before because GNOME 42 itself doesn't do that. It just gives you a few pairs and that's what you're kind of left with. You can't create your own. As far as I know, it's possible that I just missed it. Uh, but for sure, Ubuntu does it this way and I think that that's way cool. Now, you will still see some version numbers that aren't the aren't the same. So you'll see things from GNOME 40, you'll see some 41s, and you'll see the occasional 42. The thing that I'm happy about is that they're actually a lot closer than they were before. You're not seeing anything here that is GNOME 38 or something like that. They're much closer to the more current GNOME stuff. Now, that being said, they are still a little bit behind what GNOME 42 is because you get a lot of the GNOME 42 stuff, but they are at least a little bit closer, which is a good thing. So the next thing that I actually really like is the new screenshot tool. Now, I'm a big Flameshot user, and I probably wouldn't switch away from Flameshot to use this. But for people who need to take screenshots on Ubuntu, they don't usually go looking for a utility to take screenshots that is like third party. They want one that is built in. And this is actually really good. So not only is it simple, but it's kind of elegant. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's definitely m might be something you can check out. So you can, just like Flameshot, you can drag around the area that you want to take a screenshot of, and then you can just take the screenshot. You can also take a screen recording or a screencast, and then you'll hit record, and it will actually record that area of the screen. And then you just hit stop up there at the top. Uh, one thing I don't like a lot is that it actually goes away. Uh, Flameshot does this too. If I wanted to take another one, I'd actually have to go back in and type in screenshot and open the whole application again, which is kind of a pain in the tuchus, but that's not unusual for a screenshot application. Usually you take one and it just goes away. I mean, that's pretty standard procedure. I like this because it's really simple. Now, you, one could argue that it is a little bit too simple and that you can actually even, like, it doesn't allow you to change the location of where you're saving the thing that you've captured. As far as I'm aware, I don't see an area where you can customize that. It's possible that there's a setting in the settings panel and I just missed it, but uh, that is a downside. But in terms of like simplicity, this is really good. So another thing that I like actually is something that you can see during a reboot or a startup, and that's this new splash screen. It 
was very much a quick view of that, but the new icon, I really like that. Now, another thing that I, I like that kind of goes along with that is this lock screen. So if you remember the Ubuntu lock screen of yesteryear, it was this gigantic flat purple image and it bored into your eyes and made your eyes bleed, uh, especially if you didn't like the purple of Ubuntu. Now it's this gray color, and I think this looks just so much better. It uses the new icon. Other than that, nothing else that has really changed here other than this lock screen looks way better, in my opinion. So uh, if you weren't a fan of the Ubuntu Purple, uh, this is definitely something that you'll be happy about, and I know I'm happy about it as well. So The last thing I want to talk about is Nautilus. So Nautilus is a little bit of a confusing application because, especially if you're following the whole GNOME 42 thing, even in GNOME 42 the version of Nautilus that you're getting is a little bit behind what they're aiming for because the new GNOME 42 comes with a non libadweta version of Nautilus. Now, for those of you who don't know what libadweta is, it's basically this toolkit or something that they're using to do the dark mode and light mode and theming and stuff like that. And it's this whole brouhaha about how you customize your desktop. We don't really need to get into it, but the point is is that the Nautilus, even in GNOME 42, is still using the old version of the theming toolkit, not libadweta. And it's the same thing here, so we're not getting any of that new stuff that you'd get with libadweta, which is the reason why your accent colors don't come here along the side. But that doesn't mean that Nautilus hasn't gotten some upgrades. So you can now extract password protected zip files, which is really cool, something that it couldn't do before. Another thing that it that I really like is the restyled home path. So up here at the top, you'll see that the path bar is a little bit different. It's now combined and scrollable. So if you have a very long path, you can now scroll to the beginning. You don't have to keep clicking back, 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 back if you don't want to. And I think that that's actually a really good improvement. Now, Nautilus is not my favorite file manager. Everyone knows that's Crusader because Crusader is the absolute best. But in terms of look and feel, Nautilus has always been very pretty. And I do wish it was more functional, but for those of you who have to use this or, you know, decide to use this, it's actually really nice that they've put in some tweaks to make it look a list a little bit better. So that is Ubuntu 22.04. I did not go over all the brand new features. There have been several videos about that released lately by other YouTubers. I didn't want to just create another list of all the brand new features that everybody else has basically already done. And I will link to a couple of those videos down in the video description. So if you want to see all the new features, you can go watch one of those videos. I just wanted to talk about a few of the ones that I noticed that were really something that I knew I would enjoy. So I'm much more of a visual person when it comes to functionality, I guess, because I want my desktop to look good. And in my opinion, this is the best looking Ubuntu in years, mainly because they've given you customization options to make it look better. Out of the box, it still looks like Ubuntu. But because you now have these customization options, you can make it look way better. The accent colors is phenomenal. I love the fact that you can kind of tweak the look and feel of the icons without actually having to change your icons. It might prevent some hard feelings because of the inability to actually theme icons with things like GNOME tweaks when GNOME 42 actually becomes more mature. The dark mode I think looks fantastic. I like the ability to customize the panel. I've never preferred the panel along the side. I always would like it along the bottom, and I don't need it to fill the whole screen. For, to me, that's just a waste of space. So I like the ability to create that little dock thing, which has always been possible through an extension, but now it's kind of built in, so that makes me happy. So that is 22.04. I really do think that this is probably one of the best Ubuntu releases in quite a long time. There are still things that are going to annoy me. So the fact that the f the Firefox is now still a snap and you can't change that. You can't just uninstall it and install the dev package from the terminal. You can't do that anymore. That's going to bother a lot of people. Uh, but you can switch away from snaps if you want to. I did a video a couple days ago about that. And their continuing inability to actually bring all their applications up to the current version of GNOME still bugs me, even though they've gotten closer this time. I wish that they'd catch up you know there's quite a few gnome features that are really good and they've taken quite a few of those and put them in here and that's good but for whatever reason they can't quite get caught up with all of it which considering that canonical is like this gigantic corporation doesn't really make sense to me but 
whatever. So uh, if you have comments on Ubuntu 22.04, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Robert Sid, Devon Patrick, Fred Kramer, Meglin, Jack Sam, Tool, Steve A, Separate Linux, Garrick, Samuel, KB, TGB, Keith, Andy, Mitchell, J Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy Sean, Odin, Martin E, Ross, Eduardo, Arch Center, Merrick, Camp, Josh Rooley, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Phoenix, Primus, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.